You know, today, most people in Hollywood fail upwards. Harry and Meghan can't even do that. Walmart Wallace was booted from a film festival. Netflix just proved that pair are less popular than a cartoon called Peppa the Pig. And Forbes magazine just joined the Hollywood Reporter in finishing off the wannabes. Uh, celebrity tell all 300. <laughs> Spare, on a trip to the North Pole, he got frostbite on his royal todger. Who is Prince Harry? <laughs> Good thing that Misery loves company, because Harry's going to need it. Spare was just named the book for 2023 that was returned more than any other this year. Meanwhile, we got Walmart Wallace making her big acting comeback. It's finally here. And she's a background extra in an Instagram reel. I think she found her calling. Our fulfillment crew lovingly packing your lattes. Our very smart, only slightly nerdy digital team making sure the website doesn't crash again like it was last year. Finally, the glue that literally holds us all together. Our incredible, resilient fulfillment team that have helped make 2023. Watching the Megans try to succeed is like trying to solve an algebra equation using alphabet soup. It doesn't matter how long they stir, how many times they try, at the end of the day, it still spells disaster. What's going on, everybody? Fate has had a very busy month trying to balance the scales between right and wrong. Take a look at Megan and Harry. Megan, Donnie, Megan, Donnie. The delusional D-lister cannot even take the hint when she's told to exit stage left. And that's on top of the fact that she party crashed the Variety Awards. She wasn't on the invitation list, but... Let's take a second. She wasn't the only one to be rude this month. Harry had his hands full in that department. Buckingham Palace has officially removed Prince Harry's royal title from its official website. No longer his royal highness, plain old Harry, has, a, has been spotted in Japan without Meghan. My life is charity, always has been, always will be. According to the Megan's very own Archwell Foundation report, Harry, the man himself, spent the entire year, now get this, doing a grand total of 18 days worth of public charity works. And that's including the time he spent in Germany during the Invictus Games. Talk about nerve. This is the guy who tells the public with a straight face that public charity is my life's work. I just see two self-entitled, self-indulgent, whinging snowflake millennials, and I wish they'd just get off our screen, go to the States, and leave us alone. So here's a couple. They left the royal family, then they chucked them under the bus, and then branded at one time every British citizen as being bigoted, solely to feed the addiction of their money and fame. Not a great plan. So how do you think their plan is going so far to be Hollywood's next king and queen? I put it this way, 2023 is going to be known as the year forevermore that saw Harry and Meghan being unmasked and undone. Well, I think um, Meghan Markle is a very sick individual. She's mad. She needs therapy. I think she's got real mental health issues <laughs> because she manages to get offended by the most inoffensive things. I was just crying. And she was welcomed wholeheartedly, and she kicked the institution in the shins. I don't understand what's wrong with that woman. It looks like Hollywood finally started to bite back. Meghan Markle gets booted from Santa Barbara Film Festival. William Morris reaches breaking point with A-lister guest list. She who must be obeyed in her ginger handbag just got another reality check. They were told where they placed in the rank for the Hollywood pecking order. And it doesn't include insider access to the inner circle of A-list stars like Kate Blanchett or Kevin Costner. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, you know, I get I get asked a lot by my um, my uh, friends who have no manners. Kev, what's this place cost? What's it worth? Who knows? Maybe Costner is still pissed that he was asked how much his house cost. 
but that doesn't really matter. The bigger problem is for William Morris as a company. They come across as being useless. Not only that, pathetic. When the top agency of the world cannot get a pair of tickets for a couple of look at me leeches to a film festival that's in their own community that their neighbors are going to be taking a part of, that's not a good look for the brand image of William Morris. But see, the film festival didn't try to shame the Megans. They did that all to themselves. But we have so many exciting things on this slate. I can't wait until we can announce them. But um, I'm just really proud of what we're creating. My husband is loving it, too. Walmart Wallace made her big acting debut this week. Her comeback as a background extra in an Instagram reel for a coffee company that she partly owns. That would be like if her uncle cast her in his backyard play. Sure, she's the star of the show, but only because Uncle Ralph thinks she needs a confidence boost. There's a reason why the wannabes are headed for the bargain bin. Harry and Meghan brand bust, from hyped up to biggest losers of 2023. You and I know that the couple are in trouble when in the span of two weeks, not only did the Hollywood Reporter call Mr. and Mrs. has been the biggest losers of 2023, then they weren't invited to their best friend Oprah Winfrey's premiere of her new version of the Color Purple movie, then then top that off with Forbes jumping on the bandwagon to eviscerate the couple. Trust is a make or break factor, with 81% of consumers requiring it before buying into your brand. The Kardashians have earned that trust, which is why they're sitting on multi-billion dollar fortunes. Harry and Meghan, they sit in the red. While most people treat failures like stepping stones to success, the Megans treat failure like a hot tub, just something to soak in long enough till they can blame someone for getting burnt in the hot water. That's it to them. That's all it means, just to point their finger at someone. And this week, they pointed it at the royal family and blamed them for losing their Christian Dior deal. It's like Duchess Doolittle thought, way. the king of England, he don't have anything better to do than to spend his time calling up luxury houses and fashion brands in order to cancel the Montecito merchandisers. I'd call that projection on their part, because it's exactly what the Megans would do to others. Personally, I don't think there ever was a Christian Dior deal. Just a bunch of PR nonsense to fluff up their Hollywood image. Sir, your millions from Netflix for no one knows what. Put it with the rest of them. What I'm really curious about is the husband formerly known as Prince. Who is he going to blame for Spare now being named the book that was most returned in 2023? I mean, bookstores can't give it away. They actually have to now limit how many copies of Spares are returned in one day. And I guess now I'm qualified for this. Unemployment. But the bigger question is, with the reality now staring the Megans in the face, who are they going to take aim at at Netflix for releasing the ratings on their very first series? Harry and Megan's 88 million pound Netflix series is less popular than Peppa Pig. Sussex show is watched for a total of 62 million streaming hours, while first two seasons of children's cartoon draws in more than 140 million hours combined. The Megan's publicity buzz dies faster than a fly in a room full of swatters. Seriously, before the couple burnt their image to the ground, they actually could be helped to a company. At least for a couple of months, they could have brought them a lot of hype and a lot of headlines. And then down the line, the accountants would have to step in and get a headache trying to figure out how they're going to actually turn that into money. So what do we learn? We had a cartoon about a pig, a children's cartoon, beat a pair of wannabes trying to play it, being royal. The ratings from Netflix just show that the Harry and Meghan series is now ranked as the 217th most watched show on the streamer. What does that mean? Megaflix didn't only bomb, they rewrote the manual on how to burn cash faster than the Joker in the Dark Knight movie. So the real question is, who are the couple going to blame for their bad choices and misfortunes? At this point, it doesn't really matter. Whoever they attack next, it's only going to make the Megans look that much more desperate. Till then, we always have Princess Catherine, a true lady that doesn't just talk about public service being a part of her life. It is her life. Before I wrap up the video, I want to wish you and your families a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. If you enjoyed the video and you found value in it, hit the subscribe button, leave your thoughts about what the Megans are going to do next come 2024, and share with everyone you know. And if you want to win every battle and stay true to yourself, all you have to remember is, we never bow down, we never bend the knee. Always forward.